Greetings. This is Roderick Barnes. Of course, you knew that. I have news for you. I am resigning as your lead pastor. Now, I want to make it very clear. I have not been asked to leave. And I am not unhappy with Communion Chapel. Nothing could be further from the truth. I love Communion Chapel. And Communion Chapel has loved me and my family. Thank you. Thank you for working with my son, for loving on me and my wife, for being very kind and encouraging to your lead pastor. You are an awesome fellowship. So then the question is, Rod, why are you leaving? I will attempt to be both clear and brief concerning the reasons why I'm leaving Communion Chapel. The first reason is the time frame. When I was asked to come to Communion Chapel, called, I was asked, how long, Rod? What amount of time do you see yourself as being with the church? And back then, I said three years. I said I wasn't unwilling to go beyond three years, but I believe it will be three years. The truth is, it's been significantly beyond three years, over three and a half. And at the end of three years, the Lord began to make it very clear that he was sending me elsewhere. More about that in a moment. So the time frame for those who were a part of the selection process, for those who were a part of the early interviews, you know that I said three years and not because I was not willing to go beyond that, but with reminders from my wife, and from my experience as a lead pastor, I thought it would be three years. Three years for what? Well, there's the mission. When Darlene and I came to Communion Chapel, the stated mission in coming was to bring evangelism and discipleship and to work to make sure that there, were, there was more than one person in each ministry. And, and God has done exceedingly and abundantly above what we thought was going to happen in the midst of COVID, the church grew. You are doing evangelism. I'm no longer leading the evangelism efforts and you're doing discipleship and you have a youth ministry that is vibrant and it's growing. You do follow up with the people that you've reached. The truth is, by the great grace of God, through a fellowship that is truly wonderful and willing to learn, you have grown into doing evangelism and discipleship and God has given you youth and some young families. So with regard to the reason for coming to Communion Chapel, the mission of bringing evangelism and discipleship, I'd like to say I brought it, I didn't. The truth is God brought it and you embraced what God brought. And I'm so proud of what God is continuing to do through you and the young leaders that have been raised up. The last reason is calling. It was uh, declared to me a little over a year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, that my time at Communion Chapel was coming to an end. And this came from multiple people. And I didn't know why they were saying what they were saying. In January of this year, which would have been the three-year mark, a good buddy of mine, knowing that I had committed to three years, had a, had a conversation with me over lunch. And he mentioned that their elders, the elders at his church, had asked if I was willing to interview for their church. And during that conversation, I said, well, hey, if I had known that you were going to ask me that, I, I wouldn't have had lunch because I am not wanting to interview behind the back of my church. And at the time, I said, I'm not your guy, but I'd like to help with your process. I did not hide this from the elders. I let them know what was going on and that I was going to do what I could to help this other church with their process, but that I was not their guy. Over time, it became clear that not only was the timing, the timing was perfect. 
the timing was perfect in the sense that it had been three years when he asked me. And not only that, as I began to interview with them and talk with them, all the while saying in every interview, I'm not your guy. Pick another pastor. When you pick that person, I will come and serve that person. I will remain at Communion Chapel and I will come to help. And God began to indicate, I've been called. I was called to come and serve you. And I have tried to serve you with zeal. I've tried to give my best in preaching and mentoring and counseling and serving you. And you have loved me well. And I hope that you have been encouraged and built up. And I believe now that God is calling me elsewhere. This has been difficult. It would be easy if we were on bad terms. It would be easy if the relationship with was frayed. But the truth is, it's not easy because you love me and I love you. But the truth is also, I've been called elsewhere. So with that, I'm letting you know that I am coming to the end of my time of serving you as your lead pastor. The final service or sermon that I will deliver, um, at least as uh, lead pastor in that role, will be on the 24th of September. And so we have a little more time together with me serving in that capacity. I want to say that you have a great elder group. Uh, your elders are doing a great job of planning and putting together things that are going to help with this whole transition. And you've got some great people stepping up. Amber Sheevelbein, Derek Bruno, Mindy Oaks. The bosses are always doing a great job. Dr. Pat continuing to teach his Sunday school class. And I could go on and on. You get the idea. God has raised up a great group of people. And the church is not about one pastor or one person up front. It's about Jesus. And I told you, I won't come to you with anything except Christ and Him crucified. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out call me. We can talk. In the meantime, my encouragement to you is keep your eyes on Jesus and be faithful to a local church. It's easy in the absence of one person that you're familiar with to justify leaving, going elsewhere. But I'm encouraging you to be faithful to your local church and don't ask merely what can this local church do for me, but what can I do for my local church? God bless you.